So thinking about and understanding more from from talking to Fernando about how this could work uh, from a football standpoint, uh, I think he already has the technology in place where um, as a offensive coordinator or defensive coordinator or an assistant coach that has to go to the press box during the ball game uh, and then they have to talk through someone else to explain what they want done from sideline adjustments uh, between series offensively and defensively. For example, the quarterback comes off the field after a touchdown and then you go through everything that happened on the last series offensively. Well, the offensive coordinator is usually in the box and he's having to tell someone to explain to him. So you're saying it twice and it may not always get explained the way that you want it because you're the offensive coordinator. But with this technology, you could literally sit right next to the quarterback or stand next to him and you can speak in front of him and you can point and you can show him exactly what you want. So you could actually be in the press box but be able to coach your players on the sideline as if you were uh, down on the field. Welcome everyone to this new edition of our Holochat or Holographic Podcast. And today our guest is uh, Coach Corby Mickens. Corby, um, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, appreciate the uh, invitation. Well, uh, uh, Corby, with over 30 years of coaching experience in Texas, what do you believe has been the key for your longevity and success in this field? Uh, I think the, that the key has been uh, just uh, developing relationships. I mean, life is all about relationships and uh, just having, trying to be really intentional on developing relationships with the kids, you know, the student athletes and, and the coaches. Uh, I've also been blessed to um, get to work some, with some extremely talented uh, coaches at every stop of the way. And I think when, you know, you have talented people that are relationship driven that that always allows you an opportunity to be successful. Very good. Uh, how did your um, early experience playing for your father and coaching at Deer Park shape your approach to coaching? Yeah, so, you know, um, I was blessed to, uh, my dad was a, a coach for 25 years, and, um, a head coach during that time. and. And then he went into administration, so he was a principal for 25 years. But just uh, mom was a, a English teacher, and uh, then she became a counselor. And just growing up in the education business, uh, from an early age, I was able to see <clears throat> how, uh, going back to what I just said, relationships are the key thing. I saw the relationships that my dad had with the uh, with the players and the coaches and the faculty at all the the places that he worked um and just you know when, when you treat people the right way and you love on uh you love on them and you know you you really care about them um then you know uh everything else takes care of itself so just seeing that example every day you know i, I hope when i grow up i'm half the man my dad is because uh you know, he's my hero, so he taught me so much, and um, just having that upbringing is kind of what uh, instilled in me all the things that I value uh, as a person, you know, and as a uh, educator. Wow. Um, you had a highly successful run at both high school and college levels. Uh, how does your coaching philosophy differ from dealing from with student athletes to versus college athletes? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, uh, it's going to be the same theme throughout this this whole thing. You know, when, when you're trying to lead, you know, adults or you're trying to lead, you know, student athletes or and, and young people in general, um, you know, nobody really cares what you know until they know how much you care about them. 
and um, it's just always fostering that family atmosphere that we're all in this together and, um, you know uh, so that really doesn't change whether I was coaching you know junior high which I first started out at and it was the same in high school and then when I got to college it's the it's the uh, it's the same you know formula for success is just uh, you know being able to um, get people to trust you because uh, you know trust is earned it's not given and so over time once you've earned the trust then you can really coach them and you know they want to get better and they're willing to put forth the effort and then at that point you're able to hold people accountable and get them to want more for themselves than maybe they knew that they could do. Very good. Uh, what is the most important lesson you try to impart to your players, both on and on the field, over the field? I mean, that's a, you know, that's a good one. You know, I would say there's a couple of things that I would say with that. Number one is nothing works unless you do <laughs> and that's pretty basic but uh, you, you know unless you put in the hard work and you're committed and you're dedicated and you understand that it's every day I mean every day is a big word um, in our football program because you know it's every day we have to show up and we have to be, be committed we have to make a choice that we're going to work hard you know we try to keep things simple We have four rules, be here and be on time every day, work hard every day, have a great positive attitude every day. Um, and attitude may be the most important thing besides being here on time right? because you can't get better if you're not here and you can't do anything in life well if you have a bad attitude. There's always going to be a ceiling. Uh, and then do right. So th do right every day. So those are our four rules. And, you know, we have to work, we have to put, put in the work and, uh, and understand that, um, you know, playing a sport or even if it's in business, if you're looking at the scoreboard, then you're not focused on the process. So we try to teach a process, uh, how to think, how we're going to approach every day, how we're going to approach everything that we're doing throughout the day. Um, You know, I, I prefer to say it like this, you know, we want to focus on being winners, not winning. Uh, winners win, they sometimes get beat, you know, losers lose, they sometimes win. But if we focus on being winners, then winning will take care of itself. So it's handling the day in and day out little things daily that are going to uh, make us successful as a team. And, uh, and we always have to put the team first. I mean, uh, those are the things that are important to, to us as a program. Wow, that's impressive. Um, can you share your most uh, memorable moment from your time? Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I've, had, I've had quite a few. And I would say, you know, overall, you know, the, the thing that I remember the most are... Are the, are the relationships with the players and the coaches and you know it's so many times you know people get caught up in getting to the destination that they miss the journey and the journey is where all the reward is it's, it's everything that goes in daily and uh, it's just really trying to be intentional and uh, enjoy the process and just see the growth on a day-to-day -day basis so I mean um, Just each step of the way, whether it was Westfield, that's what I that's what I think about when I think about Westfield. That's what I think about with my guys at U of H and my guys at Texas. Um, it's that. Now, as far as singular events, which I think is what you're more alluding to, I mean, obviously playing in state championship game was uh, was a big highlight um, at Westfield, and then uh, at U of H being able to you know participate in the Peach Bowl and um, beat Florida State the very first year when we won conference. That was an uh, unbelievable memory with that, that group. And then, you know, at Texas, you, you know, there, there's nothing like, uh, 
you know, running out of the tunnel and get ready to play in the Red River rivalry against OU, you know, when half the stadium is orange and the other half is crimson. Um, it's, a, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. And then uh, beating Georgia in the Sugar Bowl in 2018 was, uh, was a fantastic experience. Very good. So as a coach, you've been recognized multiple times as coach of the year. What, qualify, what qualities do you think a coach must possess to earn such, as, uh, such accolades? Well, I think the, the, the biggest thing to, to get to earn any kind of Coach of the Year award is you have to have unbelievable coaching staff because, um, you know, even though my name was, was on the, the plaque, um, it was a totally total team effort. Uh, one man can't do anything. Uh, so I had, you know, exceptional, um, really talented coaches around me that were able to develop, you know, real and genuine um, relationships with the players and really pull out their best. Because, you know, when you win coach of the year, uh, it's because you've got really talented coaches around you. And then you've got players that are willing to pay the price to be successful. And, uh, you know, so it's just, it's the entire organization. You know, they don't give coach of the year, you know, awards to teams that, you know, are average. So it's it's totally a team award. Uh, I wish it would just say, you know, team of the year because that's really what it means to me more than just being coach of the year. Wow. Um, in your role as Tampa's athletics director, how do you balance admin responsibilities with coaching? Yeah, it gets tough. I mean, uh, you know, being the campus athletic director, you're over all the sports on campus. So you're the first, you know, line. So when any other sport coach needs something, they come to you or they have an issue, then they come to you. So um, it's just like anybody else that has to multitask. Uh, you know, you just have to be organized. Um, you have to be level-headed. Uh, and then, you, you know, you know, being in education, it's a lot like other business, you know, you don't know what's going to happen today, but something's going to happen. So you're just ready for anything and don't panic and, you know, just control as much as you can control ahead of time. Be proactive instead of reactive about what you have to do day in and day out. Being able to plan ahead as far as you can plan so that, uh, you know, you, you, you don't wing it. And then as things come up, then you just handle business and then get right back on task. Very good. Um, during your time at the University of Houston and Texas, what were the biggest challenges you faced and how did you overcome those? Well, I would th say that, uh, you know, the, the biggest issues making the jump from being in high school and, and going to college, um, I would say, you know, during the season, you know, football's football. Um, you know, you're working and it's it's seven days a week and you know you're you're trying to you're on the conveyor belt and it just starts and then you don't get off until your season's over with and I like to say it's groundhog day every day. So that's really the same. I would say the two biggest uh hurdles were number one, uh learning a new language because anytime you go to a new football team um, and, and you're not the head coach, then you're having to learn everything that they do and how they do it and how they say it and making sure that, you know, you're in alignment with, with the head coach and what the offensive coordinator wants. Um, that was the biggest, uh, hurdle for me was, uh, you know, I came up in the system at Deer Park, and when I left, I became an offensive coordinator. So um, that was my language for 25 years. And so I only knew one language. This is how we did it, and then I expanded on it. So going there and learning uh, the system was, was, was tough. Um, so you spend a lot of time doing that. And then, you know, the recruiting aspect of it, um, you know, when you're in high school, you're on a campus every day and, 
you know, uh, and then recruiting in college is 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. There are no off days in recruiting. So even when you aren't working, you're doing your regular football stuff. Well, you're recruiting in the middle of that. And when you go home at night, you're recruiting. So basically in college, if you're awake, then you're recruiting. So those were probably the two things that uh, that I had to get accustomed to and making the jump. Very good. Um, about technology, with technology increasing um, and playing an important aspect in sports, how do you see technology, technological advancements are impacting in football coaching and what do you see like future trends in the future? Uh, that's that's a great question. I mean, I've I've been coaching long enough to you know, um, you know, technology is 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 unbelievable, and it allows you to streamline everyday activities and make it easier, you know, for the coaches and speed the process up. Um, example, uh, you know, when I first became head coach at Westfield, we had VHS tapes. So we would have to watch the wide copies and the tight copies separately. And then Huddle came out, which allowed us to intercut it at the high school level and be able to watch both views at the same time. So that basically cut our film watching in half when we were game planning. Um, now, with technology, you're able to get, not that you couldn't before, but it's just a lot more uh, easier to come up with tendencies to be able to get different things done, you know, whether it's for players to watch on their time, to make cut-ups, uh, it, it's, it's unbelievable. The other side of that is, is because of technology, um, it's easier to get recruited by more schools. Before the technology came into it, everybody pretty much recruited regionally, uh, and then now um, you can pretty much, because of technology with the highlight videos and being able to get that in front of coaches from coast to coast, now people have, you know, a lot more schools opened up to get looked at on the recruiting side of it. So um, I'm anxious to see, because uh, that's over my, my pay grade and, and, you know, as far as the technology stuff, but I'm anxious to see what's coming next. Um to, uh, to help coaches and, and, and players uh, on the recruiting side. Uh, what advice would you give to young coaches who aspire to have a career uh, as distinguished as yours? Well, I mean, you, you've got to, the advice I would give them is you got to get a little lucky. I've been blessed and, um, and I realize that. I would say that, uh, you know, for a young coach, it's important to be there every day and work hard and, and put your best foot forward and, uh, and volunteer for everything when you're coming up. So you want to, if, if there's a job that the head coach asks somebody to do, then raise your hand and volunteer for it because, um, what it does is it shows that you're willing to work, shows you're a team player. It also shows uh, that you can be counted on. Now, obviously, if you volunteer for it, you need to complete it and get it done the best way possible. Uh, but that's how you get on head coaches' radars. That's how you move up in the business. You know, when I was a middle school coach, I didn't have to be there on the weekends when the varsity coaches were working. But I went and I made copies, I drew plays, scouting reports, whatever they needed done. Plus, while I'm doing that, I'm learning. And, and that's the key thing about volunteering for as many different things as you can do involving the program. Because as an assistant coach, you're learning how to do everything. Because when you're a head coach, you're responsible for everything that goes on within the program, and it really, really helps if you've done that yourself because you have a inner working knowledge of what it takes to get it done. For example, you know, I started out as the uh, assistant offensive line coach, tight end coach, 
uh, at Deer Park when I got my first varsity job. Before that, I was the head freshman coach. So I got to run a uh, freshman program with 115 kids in it, and I had three coaches. So it was like being a head football coach of a 4A, 5A high school um, uh, now, but 4A back then, because um, it was a totally separate campus. And then I was tight end coach, assistant O-line coach, then I became the running back coach, then I was an OC receiver coach, and when I became head coach, I coached quarterbacks, which is what I actually played. But I have the experience of coaching every position, which gives me the knowledge to be able to help the younger coaches. So do as many things as you can, work hard, sweep the floors, make coffee, uh, make coffee and just make yourself available to grow and find you a really, really, really good mentor. Somebody that's well-respected, somebody that can teach you and mentor you and help lead you in the right way. And I think if you do that, you'll be really successful. Wow, that was a great interview. Corby, thank you so much for joining us today. It was a great interview. I know that you're busy coaching and leading. Uh, hopefully this is not the last interview. Um, uh, everyone watching, just uh, stay tuned, subscribe, and watch a future interviews. Thank you for watching.